Hi to all of you students. So today you are going to learn the atomic structure. So in this your first topic is Bohr's atomic model. So this uh, Bohr's atomic model is a correction model of that Rutherford's atomic model. So before Bohr uh, proposed his um, atomic model, Rutherford also proposed that atomic model. But uh, there is uh, there are some uh, drawbacks found uh, in his model. So in order to correct uh, that atomic model bohr proposed his model known as bohr's atomic model of atom and uh, in his atomic model he explained the spectrum produced by the hydrogen and hydrogen like atoms or ions or mono electron systems so what is spectrum spectrum is the emission of the so many of uh, light is called the spectrum okay so when the electric discharge is passed through the hydrogen atom a bluish glow is obtained when that glow is passes through that prism the spectrums are produced so which is known as hydrogen spectrum and what do you mean by mono electron system it means an atom consisting of only one electron okay so one electron consisting atoms like uh, he plus li2 plus etc are the mono electron atoms so what are its postulations an atom consists of mostly empty spaces and a positively charged heavy but minute nucleus is present at the center of the atom it means we all know that an atom consisting of mostly empty spaces okay inside that atom there are no masses okay so a nucleus a very negligible amount of negligible nucleus is present inside the atom which poses some definite amount of mass that uh, it, it is because uh, there are uh, so many neutrons and protons are concentrated within that small minute nucleus okay so because of that weight of the nucleus um, it has been considered that there is some mass of that atom and the density of the nucleus is 100 trillion times of the density of the water so here the density of the nucleus is 100 trillion times than the density of the water okay so we all know that density the formula of the density is mass by volume more the mass more will be the density and uh, more the space more the space less will be its density okay and the gravitational force in the nucleus is 100 trillion times sorry 10 to the power 38 times than the gravitational force of the earth we all know that gravitational force of earth is 9.8 meter per second square but uh, here the gravitational force of nucleus is 10 to the power 38 times so it, it means that uh, it has very strongest gravitational force the mass of the atom is the mass of the nucleus okay so uh, the atom has uh, no mass uh, because it has an empty space if we remove that uh, nucleus from the atom then it is a whole empty space there is no such mass inside the atom okay so due to the presence of that nucleus inside the atom so it has uh, considered that uh, it has possessed some definite amount of mass then comes to the next point the electron in an atom revolves around the nucleus only in the certain definite circular paths or orbital or cells or energy levels it means that the electrons which are revolving around the nucleus only in a fixed orbits okay not uh, they don't alter their orbits only in the fixed orbits and the orbit are also called cells or energy levels next point these circular orbits are designated as k l m n cells etc where k cells refers to the first orbit where n is the one here n refers to the number of orbits or energy levels or cells similarly l and m and n cells etc okay then next point each orbit possesses definite amount of energy the energy of the each orbit is en the formula is en is equals to minus 2 pi square me 4 z square by n square h square which is equals to minus 1312 by n square kilojoule per mole okay where m refers to the mass of the electron e refers to the charge of the electron z refers to the atomic number n refers to the number of orbits h is the Planck's constant okay so here the <coughs> Orbit possesses definite amount of energy, but that is fixed amount of energy. It doesn't alter its energy. Okay. 
in certain amount of energy the energy of orbit go on increasing as the distance from the nucleus to the orbit increases we all know that nucleus has very strongest gravitational force okay if such a thing which is present nearer to that nucleus then it will be more stable and possess less energy and when it is uh, present um, far from that uh, nucleus then it possess less stable but more energy according to that the orbital energy possess more energy when it is present far from that nucleus okay so its formula is rn okay that is r means to radius is equals to n square square by 4 pi square m square z okay that is equals to 0 0.529 into n square whole bracket am strong okay for a to the power uh, a0 it refers to the am strong radius of the first orbit that is ksl r1 equals to 0 0.529 am strong okay so one arm strong if, uh, is equals to 10 to the power minus 8 centimeter. So, in short, R1 is equals to 0 0.529 into 10 to the power minus 8 centimeter. Similarly, just like that, radius of second, third and fourth are go going on increasing just like that. The next point is, the revolving electron can absorb or emit energy only in the fixed amount that is one photon or whole number multiple of it. It means that the electrons which absorb or emit energy only in fixed amount that is whole number here whole number refers to that uh, 1 2 3 4 etc okay but not in fractions just like 1 by 2 3 by 2 6 by 9 etc electron doesn't absorb or emit energy in a fractions it will absorb or emit energy only in the whole number that is fixed amount of energy okay next point is when an atom is associated with its normal energy its electrons are said to be in ground state. So when the atom doesn't get any excitation of energy, then its electron are always be in its ground state. Okay, it will never possess the excitus, never po never go, uh, jumps to the higher energy level uh, unless uh, it uh, accepts some uh, <clears throat> photon. Okay, then number eight is when an atom absorbs energy. Its electrons get excited and jumps to the higher energy level. The electron is unstable and in excited state and again it jumps back to the original energy by losing energy. Okay, when an atom absorbs some amount of energy, then its electron get excited uh, to the inner energy level to outer energy level. Okay, by emitting some energy, they emit some energy when they get excited. But in that excite, in that uh, excitation state, they get uh, less stable as you know that uh, more stable possess less energy and uh, less energy possess uh, more stable so in order to be stable it uh, has to lose some energy okay by emitting some uh, photon it uh, again jumps back to the original position okay the next number is when an electron jumps from lower orbit that is e1 to higher orbit e2 then inference of energy is absorbed and gives spectrum okay when an electron jumps from lower orbit to higher orbit then it uh, then uh, it uh, has to accept some amount of photon in order to jump to the lower to higher orbit okay so it gives some amount of spectrum that is del e is equals to e2 minus e1 that is equals to h nu 2 minus h nu 1 we know that e equals to h nu okay where h is the Planck's constant so for e2 it is h nu 2 and for e1 it is h nu 1 okay so taking the h common so whole bracket nu 2 minus nu 1 so in com in sort h nu is equals to h c y lambda the number 10 is when an electron jumps from higher energy level e2 or outer orbit to lower energy level or inner orbit then the difference of energy is emitted and produce spectrum just like it is just opposite that uh, when electron jumps from <coughs> inner orbit to outer orbit and again in number 10 it has said that it jumps back to its original position by losing energy so it is uh, there is difference of energy that is in uh, lower state it has possessed less amount of energy than that of the higher state so there is some difference of energy it um, it has released so the formula is just like del e is equals to h nu minus h c y lambda okay the next point is out of large number of circular orbits 
the theoretically possible around the nucleus okay so there are a large number of circular orbits which are revolving around the nucleus we cannot uh, count them practically but we can uh, assume it theoretically okay the electron moves only on those orbits whose angular momentum is fully quantized okay so <clears throat> the electron which are revolving around the nucleus uh, through the certain orbits um, it is possible only because of when it satisfies the angular momentum okay so it is formula is its formula is mvr is equals to nh nu that is nh by 2 pi we know that nu is equals to 1 by 2 pi so for this nh is multiplied by 1 by 2 pi which is equals to nh by 2 pi did you get my point then number 12 is bohr's orbits are fixed orbits since the angular momentum is fully quantized okay bohr's orbits are not alternative they are placed in the fixed orbits okay so angular velocity theta is equals to the angle theta is equals to v by r that is velocity per radius and the angular momentum is i theta and the moment of inertia that is i is equals to mr square that is mass into radius square then i theta is equals to <coughs> i is mr square into theta is your v by r so is it is equals to mvr so mvr is directly proportional to h nu we all know that here mvr so if we <coughs> equalize it then mvr is equals to nh nu n is the proportionality constant where n is the 1 2 3 4 etc just like this this number then second for then next point is energy of the electron in an orbit is negative okay because the electron is brought to the orbit of infinite distance from the nucleus where its energy is zero okay as the electron moves towards the nucleus it experiences force of attraction towards the nucleus at a result the energy is lost by the electron as a result electron comes more and more close to nucleus the attraction increases and more energy is released that is why energy of electron decreased from outer energy level to inner energy level it is the most important point that why the energy of the electron is always in negative form why <clears throat> it's because since we since we know that electrons is present far away from that nucleus okay so electron possesses some amount of energy okay so that uh, nucleus possesses some greatest uh, gravitational force so it uh, will attract the nucleus towards itself so due to due to this attraction the nucleus will move towards this attractive force towards the nucleus okay without uh, possessing its energy that is its energy its its own energy will be lost due to this attractive force of that uh, nucleus so uh, when it uh, uh, goes uh, more and more closer to that uh, nucleus its energy will be lost uh, successively okay so at the point when in uh, and at the point uh, will appear where its energy will be zero and uh, in this way its energy will be in negative form okay so these are the postulates of bohr's atomic model and uh, um, also there is some questions uh, are there that why the energy of the electron is negative and uh, another question will be like that why the energy of the electron decreases from outer energy level to inner energy level it is the important question okay then let's study that limitations of bohr's atomic model so here in the first point Bohr's model successively successfully explains the spectrum of monoelectronic species like hydrogen helium lithium but it fails to explain the about multi electronic species so in bohr's atomic model uh, he explains successfully the spectrum produced by monoelectronic system okay that is the atom consisting of only one electron not more than one okay so in h plus helium contain two electron but h uh, plus uh, means Uh, it uh, loses one electron and uh, the and the rest electron is one and uh, lithium the atomic number of lithium is three means uh, electron has three electron but uh, the it has plus two charge means lithium also has uh, one electron okay and these are the mono electronic species but uh, in but it fails to explain the multi electronic species that is uh, 
electron <coughs> but the atom contain uh, more than one electron okay it fails to explain then second point is bohr's model suggest the circular orbits to be planar and uh, two dimensional but modern research reveals that reveals them to be spaced in three dimensional space okay let's see that here uh, <coughs> bohr uh, such that uh, it will explain only for uh, two dimensional but not for three dimensional okay these circular orbits are arranged in a line but not in 3d but not in uh, 3d line okay then in third point bohr's model does not coincide with de broglie equation okay it also fails to explain um, it also coincide with it fails to coincide with heisenberg uncertainty principle that is del x into del v is greater than equals to h by 4 pi so here the bohr's atomic model fails to explain both de broglie's fails to coincide with de broglie's equation and also in heisenberg's uncertainty principle okay it uh, cannot able to satisfy that both the equation that is heisenberg and de broglie's equation and the last point is it fails to explain the zeeman effect and star effect stark effect so what do you mean by zeeman effect here the zeeman effect is when an external magnetic field is applied to that spectrum then it will separate it in several components okay which is called zeeman effect but in stark effect uh, when the when an uh, external electric field is applied to that spectrum it is also separated in several components okay so the main difference between zeeman effect and stark effect is uh, <clears throat> in zeeman effect uh, there is some external magnetic field is required but in stark effect there is some external electric field is required so there is magnetic external magnetic field and in stark effect is external electric field so these are some certain limitations of that bohr's atomic model he has also some limitations thank you